Uh, but as you can see, we're really not going anywhere. Uh, the wheel that's floating on the rear and on the front are just spinning pretty freely. What is going on today, guys? My name's Alex, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are at a familiar location. Um, I've actually shot a very similar video um, when you high in your truck. Basically, um, I was trying to show that open differentials, um, you know, attached to a 4x4 system really um, can inhibit you in certain situations. And this is really kind of the perfect example. So I kind of wanted to revisit this because it seems like a lot of you guys still don't really kind of um, fully understand what I mean when I say like 4x4 doesn't really mean that all four wheels are going to spin at the same time. Um, you know, it's, some vehicles will have that because they have locking differentials in the front and in the rear, which is what you need. You need a 4x4 system with a locking transfer case, a locking front diff, and a locking rear diff to actually get all four wheels spinning at the same time. If you don't have that, you can run into problems like this. And the other reason why I want to revisit um, this specific situation is because I saw some comments saying that maybe I should turn traction control off, turn the ESC system fully off, and that'll make a difference. And it won't, guys. Having your traction control on, ESC system on or off, is not going to make a difference when it comes to the mechanical limitations of open differentials. So I just thought I'd revisit that. Lastly, the reason why we're here, well, I guess the main reason we're here is because um, I did a video about um, hydraulic lockers or basically, you know, applying brake pressure to um, try and lock up your open differentials, hopefully getting both wheels to spin on an open differential. Um, I did that up at Mount Washington. I was unsuccessful, but I keep seeing these videos online of these Jeeps in four wheel drive um, having success with applying some brake pressure and, and being able to pop out of um, situations where open differentials are not up to the task. So I kind of wanted to revisit that topic in this specific situation, you know, the high center situation, because it's just such a really good visual because I know what wheels are going to spin and what wheels aren't going to spin. And so if I can get those wheels with the most traction to spin a little bit, then I know I've been successful with um, applying brake pressure and hopefully distributing some of that power to both wheels. So that's what we're gonna do today. This is actually my third time up here. My second time up here, I was, I was hoping to do this early in the winter, but uh, there was way too much snow and uh, I'll actually show you guys a clip here. I almost got myself uh, actually in some, uh, some pretty good trouble, but uh, I managed to squeak out, so. Holy crap, guys. I thought I was toast. For anyone who's new, We'll just go over this briefly. So with open differentials, the power is going to go to the wheel with the least resistance or, um, you know, the wheel in this situation that is pretty much off the ground or close to. And so we'll stick with the rear axle here, I guess. Um, so that wheel is going to spin. And as you can see, all the weight of the truck, mostly, it's actually really not healthy for the truck, but all the weight of the truck is gonna be on this wheel. So you're gonna have all your traction right here. Now with an open differential, we are not gonna get power to this wheel whatsoever. It's gonna all go to that wheel for the most part. So to be successful in this test, what we wanna do or what we wanna see is this wheel spinning. Now coming to the front axle, um, power is gonna be going to the opposite side just because the situation we are in. This wheel uh, is gonna have limited traction um, it's not totally off the ground, but this wheel should spin pretty freely, whereas the driver's side wheel this time has a lot of attraction because a lot more weight's on this wheel, and so we should not see this spin. So there's your rundown of what wheel should and shouldn't spin, um, and if we can get either of those wheels that aren't going to spin to spin, we know we have been successful. So let's see what happens. All right, all the electronics are on during this run. Um, as you can see, hopefully, the wheel that's in the air that's just spinning freely is kind of being held up by traction control a little bit, what it's supposed to do. Uh, but as you can see, we're really not going anywhere. Uh, the wheel that's floating on the rear and on the front are just spinning pretty freely, uh, which is what we would expect.
All right, next up, we are gonna turn the electronic stability control and the traction control both off, still in four wheel drive lock, and we will see if that makes a difference. I am very certain, if not 100% certain, it will not make a single difference. All right, here guys, we will turn the trash control as well as the electronic stability control off. Bang, there we go. And we will get ourselves a little bit stuck here. Now I am trying not to snap an axle here because this is not necessarily the most healthy thing for a truck to do. Now it is important to say if you are stuck, you definitely want to turn off your ESC system or electronic stability control system because as I've talked about in the past, um, it will actively cut power to your front drive shaft. So you definitely want to take that off if you are stuck. In a situation like this, what's really crippling is not the electronics, it's the mechanical limitation of open differentials. So, so despite having all your electronics turned off, it's really not going to make a difference, which is exactly what we saw right now. All right, guys, second run with all the electronics turned off. Um, what's kind of neat with this camera angle is you can actually see the left rear tire fully just hanging in the air and spinning. Um, but same results as the first run. We just see that the uh, front right and the rear left tires just spin and the truck kind of doesn't go anywhere. Okay, our third and final test. The main reason why I wanted to come back up here, we're going to try and use some brake pressure to try and force power to both wheels on the axle, um, therefore giving power to the wheel that has the most traction. Um, so for the rear axle, that would be the right side, and for the front axle, it would be the driver's side wheel that's not getting any power. So if we can try and force just even a little bit of power to those wheels, we may be successful overcoming this obstacle here. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna keep the traction control and the ESC system off, and uh, hopefully, we can see some results here. So, let's do that right now. Okay, here we go. There we go, so we've kinda... Okay, so, we are adequately kinda stuck here. We're actually kinda floating. So I'll apply some brake pressure. Oh, we almost had something there. Okay, okay. Back up, here we go. Now, ooh. Interesting, okay. Now, slowing things down a little bit, if you watch closely at the back left tire, you can see it all of a sudden just stops. And now what that kind of indicates to me is that the power has shifted to the other wheel. A general rule of thumb on an axle is that one wheel is going to have to spin. And if the wheel in front of us stops spinning, then power must be going to the wheel on the other side of the truck. And as we can remember, that wheel has all the traction, which may have helped us pull out of this situation here. I think what's really interesting is once that wheel stops spinning on the rear axle, that whole axle turns together. Both wheels spin at the same time, almost looking like a locked differential. So kind of interesting. Now I know it may look like the far rear tire uh, hit the ground and that's what made it stop spinning. But if you look at the suspension on the rear tire that's close to us, Look how compressed it is. There's so much weight on that side of the truck and there's hardly any weight on the far rear wheel. So that wheel is just basically kissing the ground and there really is no traction there. So that should in theory be spinning, but what's keeping it from spinning is the brake pressure and potentially forcing power to go to the wheel or the rear wheel that's in front of us, potentially pulling the truck through the situation. Another thing I'll touch on is I did have a little bit more momentum in this run than any other run. I didn't really mean for that to happen. 
Even though I was pressing the brake pedal, I did come in a little bit faster than any other run, and that could have contributed to why this was successful. Well, we started with clouds this morning, and it uh, looks like the sun is starting to poke out, uh, which is never a bad thing. But more importantly, it looks like maybe applying some brake pressure could be beneficial when you are in a four wheel drive situation. Now, I didn't have any success with that in the snow and there could be some different reasons for that. Uh, maybe I wasn't applying them as I should have been and so forth. However, in this situation with no snow and um, some grippier conditions, maybe that has a factor to play. It seemed like when I applied the brake, I did have a little bit more um, traction or a little bit more pull out of the hole there than what I had without uh, brakes being applied. Now, again, I'll have to look at the tapes to see exactly what happened um, to see if any power did actually get transferred to the wheels that were getting no power originally, or if maybe I just powered out of the hole easier. I, I'm not totally sure. It did feel like um, the brakes did help quite a bit, but yeah, very interesting. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. And I hope that maybe helps some people better understand um, what a four wheel drive system is and what it can and can't do. And it's not to say that your truck or vehicle isn't going to be worthy off road. Just make sure you know if you have a rear locker or if you have a rear open differential, if your front differential is a locking differential. Those are all things you should ask yourself before you're going off road because like I've demonstrated here, when you get in certain situations, you're not going to be receiving power to all four wheels unless you have those accessories. So keep that in mind next time you're leaving the pavement. So that's going to wrap up the video for today. I hope you guys liked it. I always enjoy making these kinds of videos. Um, and if you guys want to see some other stuff or you're interested um, or have some questions about your Ram or your pickup truck in general, uh, feel free to drop a comment down below. I get a lot of my video ideas from your questions or concerns, and I enjoy just answering them in general. So uh, don't be afraid. If you have any questions or concerns, um, let me know. But as usual, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Um, helps me out, helps the channel out. And if you like stuff like this, maybe think about subscribing. We would love to have you around. And we have some big things planned for this channel at the end of the month here. Going to be some changes and uh, should be quite the adventure. So stick around if that all seems interesting, but uh, enough of me talking. We will see you on the next freaking video.